Okay. Um, this is um, this is actually not a cooking necessary necessary. Uh, God, it's three fucking. It's almost four a.m. So I'm still delirious. Um, but as you can see, I just took a shower. Anyway, um, I sprained my ankle pretty bad, so I'm in a lot of pain right now. Um, don't ever take medical device, uh, advice in high school from a guy who's gonna be a med student. I your school nurse. I fell down the stairs while uh, uh, humming Nightmare Before Christmas um, in uh, senior year of high school. And uh, then I, he told me, he proceeded to tell me to walk it off. And then I did. And um, now I have chronic ankle pain to this day because I was in that was not the proper way to deal with a bad ankle sprain. Um, so anyway, that's just a tidbit. Um, uh, but don't worry, in college, a lot of the times uh, I'm gonna head uh, to the uh, the health center, which is like the infirmary or whatever, like uh, Harry Potter, if you guys like that kind of shit. Um, and they're open 24-7, and uh, gonna get that, gonna get to crutches. Uh, only problem is that I also have to deliver uh, 3,100 packs of paper. Okay, anyway, point being, the point of this episode is that I needed to get across this idea that actually I picked up from the Tim Ferriss, um, who actually just confirmed my anecdotal evidence about uh, resetting your sleep schedule. Okay, so basically, um, what ends up happening is, is that the human body, for my account, like I said, you, uh, Tim Ferriss really recommends, uh, experimenting with your, like, sleep habits, your eating habits, like, a any kind of, like, lifestyle changes, like, modifying them just to, like, kind of fit your, your specific circadian rhythm and, you know, all your little special features all the better, right? Now, the thing is, is that, as you know, I, in order to reset my sleep schedule, what I've been doing is, is that on the pa this past Monday and Wednesday, when I got to sleep, uh, where I, uh, basically, after I filmed college cooking, I went to sleep for four hours, and then I, I felt fine. Um, slightly groggy, uh, but by, like, 12 o'clock, I was just, I was raring to go. Um, after not sleeping the entire night and filming college cooking. Um, but what I had done is that, like, I had prepared my food between the time of, like, 5.30 and 6. And so I had actually suspected that this would happen, but now my evidence has definitely confirmed this. Basically, what I realized is is that, um, if I could find the link to Tim Ferriss's little article on this, but he, he what he mentions is is that, he, when he eats breakfast, um, that actually affects your circadian rhythm. So if you eat breakfast at a certain time, for me, at least, what, what ended up happening is, is as you can see, 3.56, I went to sleep at like 11 o'clock. Um, you end up waking up about one to two hours uh, right before you eat breakfast. Um, if you stay consistent with that, when you, if you try to do, go ahead and reset your sleep schedule. So what you want to do is you want to wait, like, so what I should have been doing if I wanted to get up at 5.36 every day is I should have eaten about, at about, like, 7.30 rather than 5.30 if I wanted to wake up at 5.30. So, because now, because I woke up at, like, about 3, and that was because 3, 3, 3.20, between that time, and that was because I've been eating at 5:30, and I was like two hours behind. And like I'm, I'm fine. I'm fully awake right now. It just kind of popped me awake. It sucks. Uh, but I mean, in the way, in a way, it's not too terrible because I actually have to go to the health center and I'm hobbling around. Um, point being, uh, find out how your body responds uh, to uh, what time you eat um, breakfast. And you'll start to notice that, like, it does affect it. Like, I noticed my junior year that um, 
when I had eaten uh, at like it, it, it pretty much resulted in the same thing. It was like when I whenever if I ate breakfast too early, what ended up happening is I popped open. I woke up, popped open. That's a strange way of putting that. Um, way too early. Um, uh, like like an hour before I was eating the breakfast. So and like like okay, I'm not a science test science test let's go with that science test but um the reason i think that is is because it's not natural for a human to actually get up and eat right away how do you how do you have food that quickly prepared right like do you does does, does he like just have a car animal carcass waiting right next to him you know evolutionarily like do you do you just like oh like oh when i was like a caveman just have an animal carcass waiting for me in the morning right just lay, lay next to me no you probably would wake up, go grab some food, like go grab some berries and shit, but that's gonna take you like at least an hour to find, to gather all that shit and get ready. So now nah, I'm sure that's how that affects, affects your circadian rhythm, but it, it's different for everybody. But food does affect your circadian rhythm. Find out how it does. I found out how mine is. If this wasn't clear, just go ahead and ask. Um, by the way, I... Look at this. So last night when I came back from the review session that I had hosted for my meteorology class, um, which is a good way to actually meet your classmates who actually care about the subject or who uh, like want to pass, like they they'll come and then then they're usually pretty nice because they they're coming to a review session that you're hosting. So student-run review sessions do it. Um, so, look how much tortellini is left. That's the tortellini from last episode. And it is Thursday at 4 o'clock. I came home, I ate a little bit of that, and I was fine. So, honestly, that tortellini, that $2 tortellini literally lasted me the entire day. Um, I, now, I wasn't home to be able to finish it, so I had... The, the reason there's stuff left is because I, when I was at school, I got a ham bacon Swiss sandwich for 3 bucks. So I spent about four dollars on food yesterday. Oh, no, I didn't. I spent more than that. I paid six dollars for food because, um, okay, seven. Because I, uh, I actually, I didn't uh, just buy that sandwich. I had that sandwich. For lunch? Yeah, uh, and then I came home, ate some tortellini, which there's still a fuck ton of, and then I had a pizza, some pizza, so two, two slices. So with that said, I spent about seven bucks yesterday. I, I tend to splurge only on days where I have like the day before final, like today is my final for meteorology, and my final lab is due for computer architecture. Um, so I do splurge on those days because if you need food, you need food, you need it quick. You know what I mean? I'm not going to carry this fucking thing around all day, but you can, you know, if you're really tight on money. Um, so, you know, with eating cheaply, um, I should pick my nose on camera. I just picked my nose on camera. Um, with eating cheaply, uh, just realize that what comes with that is like, you're gonna need to prepare the food, um, at least like a little bit, like warm it up in a microwave, boil it, something, you know. But you're also gonna have to carry it around, so um, just be aware of that. And on days where you have finals and stuff, I literally just kind of just get the the, the easiest instant food I can buy at the cheapest price possible. So it's good to know all the food places by you um because they're by your college which i did i got all the menus from every single uh college um yeah i did yeah i got all the menus from every single uh restaurant around like takeout restaurant whatever all the food places around my school 
found out that you can actually get a meatball sub for three dollars and fifty cents if you buy two of them. It's a ten inch. And it saved me a lot this summer because I've had an internship in the area and three dollars and fifty cents for a ten inch sub that definitely fit my uh, criteria of like the 600 calories for for, th for around three dollars so it went over that it had to and um so these places they have deals they're around um what i find is that in pennsylvania specifically on the main line what you're going to find is, is that it's like chinese food is actually fairly expensive in comparison to the other areas but there's a lot of like little places that are around you use yelp to find all the all the so here's the methodology if you want to find cheap takeout what you need to go is go on yelp you know type in your your college zip code find all the little places next to it type your where your apartment is and, and find all the little places next around it go to all those places just run in grab the menu look at all their specials and you can find some good shit like the three dollar you know uh, 50, you know, $3.50 $3. 10-inch subs, which fairly good deal. Um, and what else? So, I, what did I cover? I covered circadian rhythm and uh, uh, a prepared food versus takeout. So, and how to, and how to, how to buy takeout and why it's, when takeout's very useful for finals. Okay, so for like finals or just crunch times, you know, or times where you're just like, like you're, you're being a lazy bastard guy. Okay, um, I don't think there's anything else. I think I'm just rambling now. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, no, you know, there's one more thing I could actually talk about. Um, college jobs. Okay, so when I, I work as a delivery boy for the newspaper, and I'm pretty much the only one who who volunteered to work uh, to the job. You know, they didn't really interview me as much. You know, they brought me in there. I, I just I uh, I read the daily email that lists all the uh, like the news and shit. Um, and it was in the it was in there. So you know, uh, that was how I found that job but the whole point is is that for about two hours of work i make 35 bucks um that now that involves the fact that i have to drive around campus and deliver all these papers but with the combined money of gas and having you know these like two hours to earn 35 bucks like i had to take a leave of absence at my it job because i'm I mean, it's not because I'm Indian, right, that I'm good with IT, but because I didn't have friends and I put a lot of, I was on the computer a lot and I broke a lot because when I was growing up. Anyway, so I wasn't bad at IT. Um, I've grown worse over time because of newfangled technology and gaming kind of, mainstream gaming kind of leaving my life. Um, but the point is, is... Uh, you know, I picked up the IT job when I first came to Villanova. Actually, I, that's not true, but um, that's the job I've been mainly uh, maintaining and pays above minimum wage. And, and you know, my boss was really nice, but allowed me to take this leave of absence because I take 21 credits a semester um, because I had studied abroad, but I'll go into that later. Point being, um, college jobs are really convenient because, uh, I mean, there, there are like a lot of perks. There's always a perk that comes with any college job I've ever had. Always a perk. Like with this newspaper delivery thing, what happens is, is I could park anywhere on campus on the day I'm delivering the paper. So that's pretty sweet because I could just park right next to my classes and then like, and that's, that's like parking is a very, let's say, uh, valuable thing in college. So when you're thinking about college jobs, um, realize that you're gonna get a benefit no matter what. When I work for, because I work for IT, like, you know, I got to make sure that my computer, I could repair my computer 
and I had access to the tools, like, easy, you know. Um, that's because my school gives out laptops and stuff. But, um, you know, if you're interested in anything, like, just remotely even, or it sounds cool, just honestly, just apply for the job and go and, 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 and go for it. You know, I'm, 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 I wasn't bad at IT, and I'm, I'm still not bad at it. Um, because I have a lot of, I'm, I was on the computer so much, and so I know Windows pretty much in and out. Um, so, uh, but I mean, there's a lot of other cool stuff that you could actually find, you know, uh, um, on like the student job list, you know, and just keep a lookout. But you know, there's, there's the, um, with that 35 bucks I make a week with this one day, two hour old delivery, um, I, I'm able to pay for all my groceries. So, I mean, huh, groceries and food, so, and gas, pretty much. You know, I, I have a little money left over from my internship, which is why I'm able to completely afford it, but um, it works out. Um, what, what was I gonna say? So, keep a lookout for the jobs on campus if you do need money, and there are ways to make money very quickly on campus. You should have to look at all the jobs and apply to them, and like, uh, I mean, for the ones that are on the higher end of pay, um, which I did have, like, um, I had a job where I was allowed to work from my uh, uh, dorm room freshman year for the first semester, and I didn't take advantage of this enough, where they basically made me a web designer, uh, the comp sci department when I was in that they they were giving jobs just for comp sci kids so your departments will have specific jobs for you and all every single department at school will have jobs will have jobs so you, you know you like any department at school they'll have a job you know newspaper they'll have they have a job associated with it anything you know so uh, there's computers on campus, there's going to be a job associated with it that you could work at, you know? So anything on campus, like, that you are, you, any service that there, that's there, that exists, any department, you could go ahead and apply there. So what I say? So I said that the comp sci department had me do web page design. I could work from home, and I made about $11 an hour. Now, I should have taken advantage of that much more than I did. I had a meal plan back then, so, you know, I was a little, uh, I was pretty lazy. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't work as much as I could, and so I didn't make that much money. And they took away the job after I switched into computer engineering. Um, so, you know, look at your. So, so college jobs. I said the three things. You know, your depart, your specific department, any department on campus, and uh, you know the student jobs list is there, and. Um, you should be able to find something and there's stuff out there that pays fairly well just you should keep on the lookout and you find some job you don't like there's opportunities on campus i swear literally they're everywhere everybody needs somebody in the in their department like and especially if you like you you're care enough about the thing your college wants to take care of you so they'll get they'll, they'll find a place for you if you try um anyway i think i'm a little done with hobbling around um, I hope this wasn't too close to my face. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? So, yeah, that's it. So, I guess I should probably break this up into multiple things. But I'm um, feeling kind of lazy, so I don't know if I'll do that. Um, especially because I got a final in several hours, and I got the paper to deliver. And I have the lab due for my computer architecture class. Okay, so this has been college cooking, life things, and so I guess I started with cooking, and now I've expanded out. Let me see how much time I've used. Oh, about 19 minutes. Um, what I recommend is, like, before you go to college, kind of just, like, watching the, the videos I put up. Um, and, like, while you're eating or whatever. And honestly, I think that they'll be pretty beneficial for you and they'll help you out. Um, uh, if there's any other information you need to know, just let me know. Um, what else, what else? 
Yeah? Okay. Well, I'm going to go then. Um... By the way, when you're holding cameras in front of your face, uh, when you do lower, it doesn't really, it doesn't look very good, especially from here. Uh, it makes my, just accentuates my massive nose. And, um, but if you hold it higher than your face, a lot of time, any kind of camera, like taking pictures, it's, it, your face ends up looking a lot better. What I notice is that at my sister's wedding is that having, my, like they tell us to do this with our face a lot. And like that end, ended, like for the people who, like they look too high up when they take pictures and I think that has to do with the fact that just to be photogenic or at all or whatever like it's good to have it like kind of the camera above you your face um but yeah that's it uh so Knuckles is gonna has a little message oh subscribe to John's channel because it's cool and shit shit I knew I forgot something um Two websites that you want to keep checking um, are uh, Woot.com and SlickDeals.net, and sometimes we get some really good deals. Like, check this out: sixty pack of batteries for about eleven bucks after shipping. Not bad. Um, so. Yeah, selectdeals.net, also great. That's um, kind of how we found this TV. Paid like 430 for it. Um, we first bought, my methodology is is that we, we, we bought a Costco, we have a Costco card. I have a Costco card. And then I, we, what Costco has is this 90 day return policy, right? And so we had a cop, the, a 32 inch Vizio and um, we paid like 430 for that. And then we we were just kept che checking slick deals for the for the next month. And then what we decided is, is that if we find a better deal, we're gonna return the TV, and we're gonna get a bigger TV for the same price if we can. And what we did was we found that we found exactly that. Basically, that's a 42 inch for 430. So ended up working out well. So get a Costco card. That's a good way to save money. And check Woot and check SlickDeals.net, and learn to appreciate that return policy at Costco. And um, I just wanted to, uh, that methodology of buying a Costco thing and waiting for a cheaper thing to come out. Um, I have a f my my friend Gus is actually my best friend. Um, he calls that the asshole method because it's pretty asshole to do that. But I don't have much money, so. That excuses me? I guess so. Okay, peace.